The One Piece chapter hasn't come out yet, so as a result of that, I guess I'll do this first. Uh, I'm very disappointed in the system. We have to make sure that we read these chapters illegally, and then after we're done reading them, we can send them we can send them out of the country after we're done with them. That being said, they did have Itachi on the opening with a new little section with the jewels, with the diamonds. And diamonds are a beautiful thing. I love diamonds. Diamonds are like words, all right? And I've got the best words. Therefore, I've got the best diamonds. Now, we actually start this episode with some canon material of the infinite Tsukuyomi. Team 7 is protected by the Suzano. Uh, Obito is protected by the fucking plot no jutsu. Uh, so they're all good, they're all safe. At one point, Tobirama tries to cut down the cocoons, and we find out why he can't, because they just regenerate and shit. That being said, we have a lot of dreamers in this episode. Now, let me tell you something, right? I love dreamers, all right? Dreamers are beautiful people. I love them. Love them to death. But we have to make sure that these dreamers are inside of the infinite Tsukuyomi legally. We have to stop some of these shinobi from dreaming illegally. That's just a fact. You, you have to dream legal dreams. It's, it's just a fact of life. Some of these illegal dreams were actually used by Kishimoto as foreshadowing. Uh, specifically, the examples that I can think about are uh, Hinata and Naruto on the bench, uh, Shikamaru and Tamari within Shikamaru's dream, uh, and also uh, Ino seeing Sasuke and Sai fight over her. Then we have some characters that are having some crazy, crazy dreams, like Shino, who is so happy because he found a new species of bug. We have Kiba, who wants everybody to have a dog, so you get a puppy, you get a puppy, everybody gets a puppy, all right? We also have the Misukage in her dream, uh, dreaming that she's getting married. I don't know why it's so hard for somebody like her to get married, honestly. Like, have you seen the way the Misukage looks? If the Misukage were not my daughter, I'd probably be dating her. Now, some of these dreams, I'm pretty sure they were not in the manga. Like, Kankudo's Sasori Transformer puppet? Yeah, that was not part of the manga. But let me tell you something. What a filler episode that would have been. Naruto Shippuden Transformers Puppets in Disguise. That would have been the title of the episode. I loved it. Uh, great episode. Now, that being said, uh, the one that really hit the heartstrings, the one that really, oh, right in the Kokoro, was the Gata dream of him envisioning his family, you know, his friends, and then Naruto coming over to play with him. Oh, super cute, you kind of sad at the same time. Uh, by the way, the animation in this episode was great as well. Really, really well done. Um, we actually get some canon material with Team 7. I think this is canon, when uh, Sakura asks, Hey Sasuke, what's going on outside? Sasuke, being a total douchebag, says, What the fuck does that even matter? Total, total classic Sasuke behavior. It's not like we can do anything about it anyway, so stay put within my Susano. Kakashi even admits himself that he can't do anything, even though he was placed number one in the Watch Mojo countdown. A tragedy. Now, the way they explained it in this episode was that before Itachi's Edo Tensei faded away, he actually used his shotting gun to show Sasuke some of his memories, some of his past experiences. And that's where we get the knowledge. And it makes sense because otherwise, how would Sasuke know all this shit, right? We open up with different shots of the war, Shinobi dying left and right, violence all around. We love violence. Violence is a beautiful thing. Itachi comes in, there's this ninja from the Earth Village who wants some water. Itachi gives him the water and then the ninja tries to kill him. So that's how he repays Itachi's kindness by trying to kill the little boy who actually gave him some water. And then we have Itachi's father who tells him, don't forget about this view. Okay, this, this, this should be engraved in your fucking head. And then after the war, we have people already planning to fuck up Kakashi. Well, I mean, not fuck up Kakashi, but they say, well, Obito sacrifice, we can tolerate that. But he still has the shotting gun, and that kind of belongs to us. So again, the whole conflict between the Uchiha and the village, you know, the, the shinobi of, of Konoha, is illustrated in this episode, which is kind of weird because when Sasuke is born, uh, Itachi's dad says, we're going to call him Sasuke after the... Somebody who's related to the third, the third said he's okay. So it's kind of weird that he would name his son uh, after somebody who's related to the Hokage. So you know what, I take that back. I just remembered that the third was actually one of the few people that was trying to manage both sides so that there wouldn't be a civil war erupt, right? Yeah, that's what happened. So the third was the good guy in this because he was like, hey, people, calm down. We can live together, no big deal. So maybe out of respect for him, 
That's why he named Sasuke Sasuke. That being said, little Itachi is trying to figure out the meaning of life. And he does that by doing two of the worst things he could possibly do. First of all, ask Orochimaru for advice. Orochimaru says there's no meaning to life unless it's eternal. I want to manipulate death, all right, so that I can never die. He doesn't say that, but we know that's, that's what he's thinking. And then another thing that he does, little Itachi, is that he tries to commit suicide by jumping off a cliff. Spoiler alert, he actually doesn't die because he stops himself, but this is where he gets kind of indoctrinated and absorbed with the crows. This entire scene kind of reminded me of something from Batman, da 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 when all the bats are coming in, there's like a catharsis going on, a change of character, because he realizes something that he didn't know before. That was great. Uh, and this is kind of like, I think, when he gets the idea of like, crows are cool, I'm gonna use you guys when I use genjutsu. There's a scene with him and his peers, actually dodges some pebbles that are being thrown his way. Some of them without even seeing them, by the way. He turns around, and he not only blocks one pebble, but he blocks every single pebble that is being thrown his way. I was pretty good, like the sequence, kind of foreshadowing the, the way that he handles shurikens and kunai later on in the series. And then there's this little girl that obviously has a crush on him. I wonder if this little girl is going to become his lover. The entire episode ends with Toby. Uh, we all know who, who Toby is. But he arrives in Konoha, and it's the night of the attack when he summons the Nine Tails and everything goes to shit. And as we've seen in the manga, Itachi that night was in charge of taking care of little baby Sasuke, which I think Sasuke in a way is kind of making Itachi realize that maybe there's more to life than what he sees. It's not just about life and death, it's also about protecting life. And eventually that's that's what you know defines his character. But yeah, that's the, that's, and specifically Sasuke's life. I thought this was a pretty good start to the Itachi side story that we're getting. Not really sure how many episodes are left, but hey, uh, yeah, but it was good. So uh, like the review if you did, I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and uh, comment down below with your thoughts. Thanks, guys. Catch you guys later. Beautiful people.